This is Kyle Madsen with your top stories on Sports 1140. The Sacramento Kings are ruining the NBA. They've now won five in a row with a 146-115 win last night over the Atlanta Hawks in Atlanta. De'Aaron Fox had a career-high 31 points, 10 rebounds, and a career-high 15 assists in the victory. Buddy Heald added 27 points, 5 boards, and 6 assists. Sacramento is off the next two days before wrapping up their road trip Sunday in Milwaukee. The 49ers crushed the Raiders 34-3 in the battle of the Bay in the NFL, the final battle of the Bay in the NFL. Nick Mullins making his NFL debut at quarterback for the 49ers went 16 of 22 for 262 yards and three touchdowns and no picks. He finished with a 151.9 quarterback rating. Raheem Mostert had an eight, had 86 yards and seven carries in his first career touchdown as well, although he is likely done for the year with a broken arm. And the Sharks mm. took a one nothing lead over the Blue Jackets on a first period goal by Kevin LeBanc, but Columbus scored four unanswered en route to a 4-1 to victory at the Tank. Mm. Those are your top stories. And now back to the drive on Sports 1140 KHCK. I'm not letting you go to work today. Wait, what? Everybody, listen up. Welcome to The Drive. Morning, morning, morning. You're going to talk. Get on the phone at 339-1140. Pretty awesome, huh? Jump in on our text line at 44-1140. Everyone is talking about it. You must know that. The Drive starts now. All right, Kyle, let's let's pay this off so we can get to basketball and uh, your Sacramento Kings. There are, I asked you before the break, there are three players total with 250-plus passing yards, three-plus touchdowns, and no picks in their NFL debut since 1950. Nick Mullins is one of them. The hint I gave you, both of the other players are Hall of Famers, and both have either a first or a last name that is androgynous, meaning it could be used for a guy or a girl, man or woman. And one of the names is a first name. One of the names is a first name that's a last name. Could be. Yeah. One of the first names. One of the first names. You're asking me for a second hit. Now, one of the first names. No, I'm no, I'm trying to clarify. They either your have first a name. first or last name that is androgynous. Both of them do. Either a first or a last name. That could be used for a guy or a girl. That's my hint. Is it so confusing? Uh yeah, it's not that good of a hint though. That's a um, really good hint. Um it's a really good hand. I had a when it, I couldn't. I, I was I was thinking too hard about your uh, about your hint and trying to come up with androgynous names and had nothing. Hmm. Uh, so Terry Bradshaw was one I came up good with. Good guess, Terry. Yep, that is incorrect. But uh, that would fit. Um, yeah, no, I got I got nothing. You got nothing. No. Uh, the last person to do it was in 1986. That would be Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly. Okay. Kelly. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. And in 1961, Fran Tarkenton did it. Okay. That's a good hint. Okay. Um, no, it is. No, no, okay. No, you can't just brush it aside. No, that's... I'm, I'm, you really don't think that's a good hint? Fran it is, and Kelly. It is, but it's extremely confusing. How's it confusing? Because well, it, it, could be, so it could be... Uh, it could be a man or a woman's name. Yes. And it could be a first or a last name. Yeah. Yes. There's just a lot. It's a lot. I feel like you're deflecting. It's okay. No. Listen, it's a tough question. Don't feel bad. No, I'm angry. I am mad off the internet. <laughs> uh, I had my hand raised during your uh, update, but you were you were very very focused. Uh, I was not which, focusing. W- which is fine. Um, somebody texted this in. You mentioned that it was a battle of the bay, right? Battle of the bay. Uh, somebody texted in. I, I think it's very appropriate. <laughs> More like slaughter by the water. <laughs> <laughs> Good job on the Jiffy Loop text line at 44 11 40. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, somebody's on the text line yanking my chain here. Last names are not male or female. Stupid. Kelly was his last exactly. name. Kelly exactly. was his last name. Exactly. Kelly's a name that could be used every, for a guy or a girl. Every last name is androgynous. Really? Remember that girl, Madsen Smith? I know you I lo- know. I agree with the text. Yeah, this text is that's stupid. Why your hint was confusing. I just want to talk about the Kings and this guy or girl. Don't know. It's an androgynous phone number. Hey, here's a hint for you. Every Kings player has an androgynous last name. No, they don't. Oh, oh, remember that lady who starred in that movie, Bealitza Johnson? 
Speaking of Nemanja Bialica, by the way, uh, TPA, TPA. We've, we've heard a lot about TPA. Do you have a good grasp on TPA? Tony Parker's assists. That is correct. TPA is like offense. Total points added. Thank you. And and it combines it with the defensive taken away and all that. It's a, it's a measurement right. on how good a player is on both ends. Uh, I have here uh, the top 20 list of, of TPAers uh, in the NBA in this young, young season. Would it surprise any of you if I told you that the highest-ranked Sacramento King on the list, Kyle, man, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning on you a lot today. Should take a guess. Highest-ranked Sacramento King with, with a decent amount of minutes. Given the intro to this, I'm going to pick Nemanja Bielitsa. Wrong! No, I'm just kidding. That's right. <laughs> Nemanja, or should I say, I'm no, sorry. No, Lamont Shumpert. Nemanja. Oh, got, sorry, we, Nemanja. That's, I, Nemanja. I'm doing Bielitsa. it, too. It's, that's not on you. I'm doing it, too. It's Nemanja Bielitsa, guy. Nemanja Bielitsa is eighth in the NBA in TPA. He is ahead of, and should I say directly ahead of, LeBron James, Joel Embiid, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Kevin Durant, Jimmy Butler, Blake Griffin, Russ Westbrook. How about that? Oh, man, I went too far down the list. I just saw Zach Collins is down there. Dang it. That was our that was our guy. That's <laughs> fine. It's fine. Uh, uh, what else do we have here? So Bielitsa is number eight. Uh, De'Aaron Fox is the youngest player ever to put up thirty plus, fifteen plus, ten plus. That's pretty good. And then I have a buddy healed note for you too. Uh, many of us have gone through his last few games. I'm not the only one who did this. His last five games, Buddy Heald is averaging 24 points even, 7.2 boards, 3.6 assists. Uh, Kyle, 24 points, 7.2 boards, 3.6 assists. If that is what he is averaging for the entire season leading up to, uh, you know, February, is he an all-star? Are those all-star numbers in your mind? Is that enough to be an all-star? From the way a, ahead of the a, game. In a in a vacuum? No, on an NBA court, idiot. <laughs> in a vacuum, yes. 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 But when it comes to making the all-star team, it's more of a popularity contest would than he, would anything. He, would he be would he be asked to play as a reserve? I, I, I don't think he'll get obviously no, no king's gonna be a starter. I think I think we unless Fox averages a triple double between now and then it's but do you yeah. do you think that's enough to be added as a reserve? I, I, we're just smoking here, but twenty four yeah, seven it, it, and it three. should it, it should be mm-hmm. for sure. But like I said, when you when you look realistically at all the guards in the in the Western Conference that are going to make the All Star team, mm-hmm. it would it would take a lot for Buddy Hield to to sneak in over the likes of, yeah. of James Harden and. Uh, and your Clay Thompsons, and then you got all the point guards that can play both spots in an All Star game. And is the question is Buddy Hield best suited as a starter for the Kings? Is that question now off the table, or do you lean more towards Dave Yeager is at the craps table and he's winning? Don't screw with him. Hmm. I am um, hmm. I think the role they have Buddy playing right now where and I was talking to uh King's Twitter MVP John about this last night. Oh god. But <laughs> but Buddy Heald's issue last year was that he couldn't particularly handle the ball very well. But this year he's able to lead the break. We saw him make a, a sweet like behind the back dribble last night before dishing it out to Bielitsa for a three. I think he missed the shot, but the but the pass was there. And if he can run the break, I, I see no reason that it should matter whether he's starting or playing off the bench. I know there's a psyche thing that goes into it, but I think when when Bogdan comes back, I think you keep healed in as a starter mm-hmm. and and see see from there. But I, I think they're I mean, I don't know, I think their skill sets are similar enough that they can be somewhat interchangeable. I feel like it's gotta be Bogdan and Healed at the two three. Bealitz at the four, Willie at the five, Fox at the one, and, and it scares me because that's almost too obvious. Yeah, that's, something that's, that's be... their that's their best five. And I might be missing something on defense that may not work 
Sure. Uh, but Buddy Heald's also been playing pretty good defense, and that's not new. Yeah, he had a really nice play last night where uh, he had to close out really quickly, and the and the shooter pump faked, and he stayed on his feet to stay in front of him. And uh, I think it was on Bazemore. I think it was on Kent Bazemore at the mm-hmm. top of the circle. And Bazemore would have had an open lane if, if Heald had jumped. And instead he stayed on his feet. It was really good defense. It's just an example of, of yeah. what he's done on that end. He still has a couple plays a game that tick me off. Like pass right to him and it goes just off his yeah, off sure. his hands. But I'll take it. The Kings between last year and this year have a 77 point difference in results in Atlanta. They lost by 46 last year. They won by 31 this year. It's the first win in Atlanta since 2006. Now, think about that. And this isn't a shot at my guy DeMarcus Cousins, but in all those Cousins years, DeMarcus, DeMarcus's team never saw a win in Atlanta, just to kind of give you an idea. Tyreek Evans never saw a win in Atlanta. Here's a list of teams I've also put together. Sorry to throw so many stats at you. Here's a list of teams that have more wins on the road than the Sacramento Kings. A list of teams Can I that guess? have more wins on the road. I'll let you guess. Let me just play some bed music real quick underneath your guess, okay? Yeah, thanks. Go ahead. That's my guess. It's an excellent guess, Kyle. You got it right. No teams, no teams have won more games on the road than the Sacramento Kings. Only the lowly Golden State Warriors, who are also off to a surprisingly good start. They're the only ones that have four road wins. (laughs) I don't even know what I'm talking about right now when it comes to these Kings. This is so weird. Not going to lie, it's weird. The Sacramento Kings are currently tied for San Antonio in the 4-5 spot. San Antonio ahead of them by percentage. The Sacramento Kings have twice the amount of road wins as they do home wins. They also have twice the amount of games on the road than they do at home. Oh, with last night's win, the Sacramento Kings go into positive territory in scoring differential at plus 3.2. They have the eighth best record in the league. By the way, last note, that eighth best record in the league, they're tied, percentage-wise, with the Memphis Grizzlies, who many people aren't counting as a quality win. You can't have it both ways. Either it's a quality win because the team was a playoff team last year, or it's a quality win because the team is good this year. I don't know if Memphis is going to be good. Probably not, but they're 4 and 2 they're four and two, and they're three and zero at home. Last note for you: points per game. You've probably been wondering about that. The Sacramento Kings, when it comes to points per game, are it's not loading. There it is. <laughs> they're fourth in the league, behind only the Lakers, Pelicans, and Golden State Warriors. All right, four down territory is next. We're going to talk about uh, another member of football media that is no longer with us. We'll look at the games this weekend, the biggest one of all, and uh, a Jameis Winston question as well. So we'll switch off the Kings for a second. We'll get into four-down territory next right here on Sports 1140 KHTK. Brought to you by Fire Wings. 21 different flavors to choose from. Firewings.com. Just wing it. We'll be there today. Yeah, we will. Eating some wings. Very excited about that. Me too. Four down territory question. I had number... requests from family to bring some home. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. For, question uh, number first down. Perhaps the greatest football writer ever, Paul, Dr. Z Zimmerman. He passed away yesterday. Who is the greatest writer today? Just wanted to find an excuse to mention Dr. Z. Uh, this is probably really a generational thing. It Kyle, is. you may have seen like clips on him or whatever. Dr. Z, back in the day when Sports Illustrated was a must-read, 
Dr. Z was a must read. Mm-hmm. You know, he'd have his picks at the beginning of the year throughout the year. He was just a really good way, a, a, a guy who he knew the game very intricately, but was able to explain it to, you know, nine, 10 year old Carmichael Dave and millions right. of other Carmichael Daves around the world that are nine and 10. In a way that you could understand, that was very accessible. Uh, he suffered three strokes. It's really sad. He suffered three strokes in 2008, and that ended his writing career. Uh, but was still very. I saw a documentary on him uh, all together uh, in the brain. Sure. Just, just couldn't do it with his hands. Um, now, I mean, I, Peter King's got to be up there. Peter King's going to be up there. You know, I I think about guys like Schefter. Uh, guys they're like not, uh, Florio, not, but they're not. It's right. It's so much different writers. with social media. Like yeah. Ian Rappaport made a joke on Twitter one day about uh, his writing process and how he doesn't write anymore. Like he's paid to tweet. Yeah, like that. That's his. That that's it's the, the extent of the writing. They need video hits and, and tweets from. I think. I think. Yeah, you get Peter King because his his Monday morning. I guess he's not with MMQB, but his m- m- football morning in America right, or right, whatever it's right. called now with yep. NBC Sports. That's a that's one of those must reads. Uh, it's not. I a, guess. I guess. I mean, Simmons had that mantle for for a minute. Simmons was a you know he's a caricature now, and a lot of people don't like him. But for a long time, Simmons a, page two stuff was amazing. Right, and and Simmons now, in, as far as being a media, being at the forefront of the media yep. revolution, is is still there. But I think writer wise, I think the next time we we have a conversation when 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 we're sitting here down the road, you know, years and years yeah. down the road. Uh, I think Peter King is going to be the next guy that we really talk about as I think like as like he was right. a must read type of guy. Second down. Lee Jenkins too. I think. Lee Jenkins yeah. really Second did. Down. Uh, give me your game of the weekend. You know, there's some weeks where you don't really have that great of an option. There's <laughs> a lot of great games. There are a lot of really interesting games this week, and two stand head and shoulders. Head and shoulders above that. In fact, I think it sucks. They're, they flex stuff all the time. One of these games one of these games is a Sunday night game. The other should be flexed to Monday night if there was any freaking way to do that. But unfortunately, it's the Cowboys on Monday night. You don't you don't you don't out flex Jerry Jones. Right. Um Yeah, I'm gonna go with the obvious one, but it's a coin flip here. I'm gonna go with Sunday night football. Aaron Rodgers visits Foxborough to take on the Patriots. Now, this may may very well not be as good a game as the other option, but this is Brady, this is Rodgers. Probably the last time they play each other, unless it happens to be in a Super Bowl, and you're talking about two guys that you could sit here and make an argument. In fact, there's nobody else in football you could make an argument for that's playing right now that's the greatest of all time. Sorry, Drew Brees, but people are going to take Tom Brady. People are going to take Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And then, obviously, as we as we look down the other game, Jets at Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you say that. We talked about this the other day, though. We talked about weird matchups that, yeah. that's yeah. often – that could end up being a blast of a game. Yeah, but, but uh, obviously, it's Rams at Saints. Yep. Battle for the NFC. I don't think any football fan with, with any access to watching games is going to be locked into anything nope. besides that. On Sunday afternoon, that's going to be a ton of fun, and we'll get to see. I mean, that's a potential NFC Championship game preview, with with the winner possibly hosting that game come playoff time. So that's a big game, and I think we're going to get the very best from the two top teams in the NFC. Combined records of fourteen and one. Yeah, it's in New Orleans, yeah. and both those teams on turf. That's going to be and, and no it's Raiders gonna, or Niners to distract us either, which is great. It's going to be as the kids say, lit. Lit. Well, uh, we got to go, but what's the over under? What do you, are you looking? Don't look. Oh, I, I just looked. Oh, you just looked. I okay. thought you were asking, you, so I was like, you, oh, it's right It's 59 and a half low. I, I think I would go, uh, yeah, uh, it's the biggest one of the year. It's the highest one of the yeah. year. Yeah. I might uh, go under. Watch, it's like 21-10. Yeah. Third down. Third down. Who needs to win the most in week eight? Well, you can go with a lot of options here. I, I, I'm going to stick with one of our earlier games. Uh, the Packers aren't going to get it, but, man, do they need a win. Mm-hmm. They really need a win, and that schedule ain't getting any easier at all coming up for them. That is a uh, – that's a that's a two-team race, basically. Well, three-team race, excuse me, with uh, with Minnesota and Chicago. And the Packers are sitting right now at 3-3-1. Three, three and one. The Packers are 0-3 oh on the road, and most likely with New England favored by 5.5, they're going to be 0-4 oh on the road. Going into Foxborough, that's a tall task. 
Yeah, I think every team in the NFC North because I was trying to pick one and I and I can't. The the Bears are four and three. The Vikings are four three and one. You just mentioned the Packers, and then the Lions are three and four. The Lions play the Vikings. I, I, so I guess I guess if I had to right. pick one, I'm going Lions. But do we? The reason why I left the Lions out is do we think they kind of made a nod to next year with the Golden Tate trade? Do you think that was maybe not throwing in the towel, but they threw in like the Kleenex? Maybe a little bit, but they still have Kenny Galladay and, and Marvin Jones. They still sure. have some weapons on that offense. But uh, if if they have any chance to to make the playoffs, they're going to have to win that game. And then I guess, like I said, you could say the same for for the Vikings. They don't want to fall too far behind. Fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth down. Will Jameis Winston be a Buccaneer next season? I don't think so been thinking about either. this a lot lately. Obviously, Jameis is a Florida State kid, and I, I like Florida State kids, but Jameis Winston's kind of been an exception for me. Are so you claiming him? No, I've had no problems going up against Jameis Winston and the issues he has. Now, now hey, Jameis Winston, at his best, is a phenomenal football player and a really good leader and a really good locker room guy And when, when he's at his best. The problem is he's not at his best that much. And on the field, he's been a borderline atrocious at times this year. I think this is one of those situations where the Buccaneers need to cut bait. Jameis Winston needs a fresh start. He needs to be in a different environment. Get him out of Florida. Get him out of Florida. Send him somewhere. There are plenty of teams that could use a Jameis Winston. Uh, if I'm Buffalo, I'm making a phone call. If I'm Buffalo, I'm on the phone with Tampa Bay, and, and I'm trading uh, you know whatever I can within reason for this guy. But at this point, I don't, I don't think – and when I say that, and when I say within reason, I don't think it's going to take much to get him out of Tampa Bay. No, they picked up his fifth-year option. He's going to make twenty point nine million next year, yeah. but they can cut him for free. They, they, there's no dead cap on that uh, if they cut him at any point. So, uh, and then he's a free agent in twenty twenty. If, if honestly, if you're the Bills and you want, or you're a quarterback needy team and you want Jameis Winston, I would just ride it out. I yeah. wouldn't. I wouldn't trade anything for him. By the way, I didn't look at the test line. Now, one vote best uh, football writer today, Kyle Madsen. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. That, Thank you. It's very wow. nice. Thank you, Mrs. Madsen. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, all right, Sean Salisbury is going to come on with us here at seven thirty-five. Now, Kyle and I talked about this before. We're very aware. This is, we normally have Sean and 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 Dave Richard on. And that is our 7.30 to 8.30 block with four down territory here. So that gives us an hour and 15 minutes straight of football. But we're very aware of what the Kings are doing and what you guys want to talk about. And the Raiders and Niners already played. So we're going to probably truncate both interviews. We'll visit with Sean. We'll visit with Dave Rich and get fancy football stuff. But we're also going to get some Kings into both segments as well. So sit back and relax. Second half of the show is next right here on Sports 1140 KHDK. Kyle's talking to Pat and Tom right now, and he doesn't know that the break started, so I'm going to do his update. <clears throat> Kings win! Kings win! The Kings won. They've won five in a row, and nothing else matters. Niners won. Who cares? It wasn't the Battle of the Bay. It was a slaughter by the water. That's what the texter said. And in other news, the Kings win. Nobody has more road wins than they do. Nobody younger has ever put up 35, 15, and 10 than De'Aaron Fox. That's your sports update. Now back to the drive with Kyle Madsen, Sports 1140 KHTK. <laughs> it's the drive on Sports 1140 KHTK. Welcome back into the drive. 339 1140. 40, uh, 44 1140. It's a Jiffy Lube text line. 1 800 920 1140 is your Firewings hotline. 21 different flavors to choose from. Find a location nearest you at firewings.com. Firewings just wing it. Hey, Sean Salisbury here in a minute. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> Woo! Yeah! Okay, bit's over. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I wasn't prepared for that bit, so I didn't have anything to say. By the way, I uh, it's funny. I had Sean's going to join us in a couple minutes. I, <laughs> I have, just said that. Uh, you did. I was just resetting a reset. I have to leave uh, next Thursday at 8 o'clock, right? Oh. So we were, and, and Sam comes on at 8. So we were, we were discussing the idea of do we... Do we pre-record something? Okay. Right. Um, do we bring in somebody from the bullpen, or do we just go you and Sam from eight to eight thirty? It's your call. And then what from eight thirty to nine? Well, <laughs> I don't know. You just just go to. Go so to I gym. just have to. I just have to prep an hour. Well, you talk including to, thirty minutes with Sam. You talk to Sam. That's thirty minutes. Uh, then you do. Uh, then you got to do one one segment. 
you and Eunice. Cool, just an hour of dubs talk. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> we'll either pre-record something or, or have Matt George or Scott Marsh come on in. <laughs> That's a great point. Thank you. It's like, wow, Sam, great to talk to you. So these warriors, man. Uh, uh, Kings have won seven in a row or whatever it is by that point. Uh, right, and you're, just, you're just like, so dream on green. Like, man, hey, how do you feel about Damian Jones? <laughs> From the 916, salami, pickle, and cream cheese. What? I'm not going to read the rest of that. But what? That what, sounds like what? the worst law firm ever. <laughs> Have you ever had that appetizer? Yeah, my, uh, no. Okay. But my mom makes a version of it. Yeah. I believe she's also made that, but she makes a version of it. It's a ham roll. It's, it's uh, you know, the square slices of ham or the rectangular slices of ham? Mm. It's that with a thin layer of cream cheese sure. spread across it. With a green onion on the inside, you roll it up, and then you cut it into- Oh, that's very pieces. good. It's delightful. Ham mm. rolls, man. Yeah, this is just a, it's one of the little circles yeah, of salami. Yeah, it sounds like the same, same type of thin bit. of cream cheese mm-hmm. and a little thin of pickle, and you roll it up and you toothpick it. That sounds good. That yeah. sounds like something I would enjoy. Surprised somebody hasn't heard of that before. We'll get Sean on the- phone right now uh we'll talk to sean like i said we're, we're gonna go truncated with uh, dave richard we'll get your fantasy football questions in but get them in quick because we're only going about 10 minutes with him uh because i don't i to be quite honest i don't want to spend an hour and 15 minutes straight on football today the raiders and niners played and i don't know what there is to talk about other than it was a great night for the niners it was a great night for nick mullins that's a that's a huge fun story but i don't know which is the bigger story it, 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 Nick Mullins and the 49ers or the fact that the Raiders have pretty much given up on the season and you saw it last night and normally I would come in today and as a lifelong Niner fan I would be jumping up and down on a Raider fan uh, I, I would be talking all kinds of garbage but it just seems wrong this year it seems very sad I, I actually uh, I and this is probably worse than me talking garbage if you're a Raider fan but I I, I feel bad I pity I truly pity Raider fan this year. And I don't mean that in a condescending way. I, I don't mean that in um, a talking down way. I mean that as in your team is leaving for Las Vegas. Uh, your 10-year, $100 million head coach has come in and decimated the team. And you just went and played in your same area, by the way. Although it was a road game, let's be honest, it's mm-hmm. in the Bay Area. And you got thoroughly embarrassed by that one-win team and a quarterback that was uh, playing Parcheesi three days ago. Yeah, that was a – and it, it wasn't so much because the Raiders – we talked about it yesterday. The Raiders have on paper a more talented roster than the I agree with that. Do. Right now, a health, healthy the, roster, the, yes. The level at which the Raiders have quit on their head coach is astounding. It is. The 49ers walked down the field on their first drive. Yep. And it went, oh, it was okay. Kyle Shanahan's scripted first drive or two are always very good. The Raiders will adjust. They did not. Offensively, they had nothing for a bad 49ers pass rush. The 49ers had three, their, their season high for a game in sacks was three. They had four in the first half. Yes. And Cassius Marsh had two and a half sacks. Cassius Marsh is not that good of a player. Did you hear John Gruden say before the game that players are calling him all the time, dying to play for the Raiders? Yeah, which is, I think, I believe that's tampering, unless they're not active, which I would believe. So Des Bryant's calling him? Yeah. Here's John Gruden. I see players after every game we play that, you know, want to be Raiders. That's been the case my whole life. I think the brand of the Raiders is is an exciting one, and I think a lot of players no doubt do want to play for us in the future. And I'm not going to speculate any further than that. I'm not going to get into who calls me and who texts me. I've made a lot of friends in this business over the years. Maybe the biggest slam dunk last night didn't happen in the game. It happened after the game on a question asked to 49er head coach Kyle Shanahan. How do you feel about how the Niners are about to become the Bay Area's only NFL franchise? I feel like it's kind of always been like that, too. So it's... <laughs> I mean, I don't mean it in that way, but I mean, they've been here the longest, and they've never left. <laughs> Kyle, they're already dead. Stop. Oh, my God. Kid on the playground with his hands on his cheeks, dot I, gif. I get, what, <laughs> I, get, I get what he's saying, though, is, is the 49ers, yeah, they have a, a kind of na- – there are 49ers fans all over the country. Because the the 49ers were very good when football really rose to prominence. 
uh, is a popular sport in the in in the United States. Sure, but, but the Raiders' appeal is not is not Bay Area based. Like I, I would contend, I I don't have facts for this, but I would I would not be surprised to find out there are more Raider fans in the Southern California area, like south of Bakersfield than there are in in this area. I think one thing you can say that underscores your point that is factual is, and this upsets people, but it's true, the Bay Area has always been a 49er and Giants town mm -hmm. area, and the Raiders and A's have always been second. And it's the same way in New York with the Giants and Jets and the Yankees and the Mets. Yep. It's the same thing. Yep. There is the older brother and the little brother. Now, that doesn't mean the Raiders can't be better. That doesn't mean that the Niners fans are better than the Raiders. It, it, right. Ratings, I, I understand the complex. Right. I understand the complex that comes with it because I'm an A's fan. Right. Like, I, I, I totally understand that. But his, I, I fully understand his larger point that the, the Niners had never moved out of the Bay Area. Yeah, they moved from San Francisco. And if you want to be a hardcore San Franciscan and say they left our city, then okay, fine. I'm not going to argue with you. That That's your MO. But they're still in the Bay Area. Yeah. The Raiders have been in the Bay Area, gone to LA, come back, and now they're leaving again. Right. They it's... can go, and they can go be successful elsewhere. Sure. I don't think the 49ers could move their franchise I don't either. To, to Portland and have a successful franchise. And if a Raider fan wants to hang their hat on the fact that they're more likely to follow the Raiders to Vegas yeah. than Niner fans are to Portland. Then hang and the hat on that. That's fine. And they, and they are. They are. Like, that's just how the, the team is. Correct. That, that's not a knock on them. No. But Giants, Jets, Yankees, Mets, R2, Giants, A's, Niners, Raiders. And yeah. last night, though, as much as I'm a Niner fan, as much as I enjoyed it, I just felt a little bad. Just, ugh. I like Derek Carr. I like a lot of those Raiders that played. I had high hopes for them this year. I would have, honest to God, if my Niners couldn't win a championship this year, and they won't, I would have wanted to see the Raiders win one. I would like to see Raider fans get a Super Bowl before they left for Vegas, and that's true. I really do feel that way. And that's not going to happen, probably, almost certainly. Nick Mullins had a great night last night, and then we'll switch back to Kings here. Do you know what the greatest thing to happen to Nick Mullins was yesterday, though, Kyle? Richard Sherman calling him BDN. That's the second greatest. The third greatest was his debut, which was record-setting. The... Was it a phone call from fellow Southern Mississippi alum Brett Favre? Uh, that would be the fourth greatest in my unofficial rankings. The first greatest happened on social media. I guess it's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> it's cool. I thought he'd have more of a tag in the beginning. Let me reset this. Nick Mullins got verified on Twitter during the game. He was unverified before the game. He got verified on Twitter during the game and was asked about it. I guess it. it's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's cool. I think somebody told me after the game, I was really excited about a lot more things than that. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, there you go. Congratulations, Nick Mullins. Congratulations to the 49ers. And, and if you're a Raider fan and you want to hang your hat on something, hang your hat on this. Yeah, the Niners get bragging rights. Yeah, uh, the Niners got to have a fun night and, and dance all over the Raiders' graves. Uh, but in the end, the Raiders uh, made a great case for draft picks. And, and in effect, <clears throat> especially with the Niners playing the Giants next, in effect, last night could very well end up being that the Raiders – traded a win last night in exchange for two or three draft picks higher than the 49ers. We'll have to see how that all plays out at the end of the year. But if I'm Raider fan, I'm thinking, yeah, this loss sucks, but come NFL draft, let's look at where we're drafting and where the Niners are drafting. And in hindsight, would it be worth it? Trust me, the sting from the loss to the 49ers will be well gone by the time the draft hits. And you're looking at guys that the Raiders, that the Niners can't look at because that's not where they're drafting. And to all of you on the tax line, can you relax? All the people on the tax line, they're saying, no, Dave, it's you guys get wrapped in the stupidest stuff, and I actually love it. For all of you saying it's salami cream cheese and pepperoncini, or it's salami cream cheese and olive, let me be clear. 
Salami cream cheese and pickle is the most popular variation. And yes, I actually prefer the one with pepperoncini and I've had the one with olive before. It's salami, cream cheese, and basically what amounts to an acid. Yes. An acid. Yeah, that acidic kind of that brine. Acidic, yeah. Yes, exactly. And, and you could put a sport pepper in there. Uh, you, you could put- Pick, a, uh, pick your pick your acidic- Jardiniera, whatever you want to do. You could put a number yes. of things in there. Yeah. So calm down. A cup of coffee. A Sour Patch Kid. <laughs> Just maybe a little maybe a little vial of some hydrochloric acid in there. Right? I, I wouldn't mean, suggest that. Definitely don't do that. For yourself. sure don't do that. A message from Kyle Madsen. <laughs> uh, the Sacramento Kings beat the Atlanta Hawks 114, 114. Hold on. Watch this. 114 plus 32. So a total of 146. Oh, okay. Hey, we were talking about yesterday, this show's for kids. Uh, you're doing math. Yeah, you know, I'm doing math. I'm nice doing math in. for them. A lot, a lot of stuff to break down uh, from this game. Obviously, De'Aaron Fox, number one. De'Aaron Fox with a triple-double last night. Uh, De'Aaron Fox, the youngest player ever to put up a stat line of at least 35 points, uh, 15 assists, and 10 boards. Somebody asked me earlier on the text line, hey, when you say something like 35, 10, and 5, sometimes you switch rebounds and assists. I think generally it goes points, rebounds, assists, but I think it's kind of acceptable when you're talking about a guard. It's generally generally accepted that assists would be the second. I don't know if there's a standing rule on that, but if I say De'Aaron Fox went 35 or you know 30, 15, and 10, I think most people understand that we're going assists and then rebounds. If I said the same thing for Willie Cauley-Stein, I think most people would accept that that 15 was rebounds, unless otherwise... Um, out. If I'm if I'm saying all three stats, I go points, rebounds, assists. I think most people do. That that's how I, I do it every time. But if you tell me De'Aaron Fox had 31 and 15 last night, I'm assuming you mean points and assists. A, a, exactly. So if you do the two, I'm judging it based on based on their their play. We played this earlier, but if Kings fans were riding too high and they want a reason to get their bubble popped, here's Charles Barkley. We've been waiting. This We've might be the year. Yeah, we waiting. Might I mean, be the year. They, once, this might be the year for what? That they contend for a playoff spot. Yeah, write gonna, it down. Oh, write it down. Write, <laughs> almost going to write that down. You're going to be <laughs> any, down, any stronger than that? No, you, no. This it, be it, the, it might, it so might be the be year. Over, you're you're in the West. You're gonna, you think that Sacramento is going to be over 500? Yes, they're going to be over 500. Okay. Will Guarantee. The, will they get Guarantee. the AC? No, I guarantee they're going to be over four or 500, Ernie. Uh, and you know, they only have Chuck. 20. They're going to win 40 okay. games this year. Okay. 41, 42. They, well, well, yeah, it's going to have to be going to have to be 42 to be over 500. Oh, five. Okay, guarantee the Kings going to win over 42 games. Okay. <sighs> and they get the AC, I did that too. I don't know. I didn't say that now. You did. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to win over they're going to be over 500. I Much guarantee. improved. Oh boy. Oh boy. Welp. Thanks, Chuck. That that worked. So Chuck has guaranteed that. Meanwhile, let's go to my guy, Lance Woods. You heard Lance Woods, who is a comedian from around here and a, a very, very funny person. Lance Woods was having a little bit of fun with uh, our Sacramento Kings. Let me find some music here. Lance Woods, once again... By request after last night's game. That's five. That's five in a row. We went right into Atlanta, into that beautiful new arena, and we showed them what time it is. They got a beautiful arena, too. They do haircuts at the arena. But tonight, we was giving out the fade. You seen De'Aaron Fox? You seen the triple-double? That's the first of his career, but it's not going to be the last. We got one of them rookies from last year, too, but they ain't talk about him. They talked about Ben Simmons, the rookie, in his 14th NBA season. They talked about Mitchell. They talked about Tatum. They talked about Ball, but they ain't talk about Fox. But he the dude. He should be an all-star this year. Buddy Hill should be an all-star this year. We're going to have two all-stars. And Dave Yeager should be the coach of the year. And Slamson should be the mascot of the year. And the dancers should be the dancers of the year. And our concession people should be the concession stand people of the year. Have you had the food at Golden One Center? It's delicious. <laughs> Dude, just keep making those. Lance. You keep making those. 
we will happily <laughs> we will happily keep playing those. Of course, the Kings also have to win a little bit too. Three three nine eleven forty one eight hundred nine two zero eleven forty. If you have questions, if you have statements about these Kings, whatever you want to say. <laughs> By the way, people ask about Sean Salisbury. Uh, we could not get Sean uh, on the phone. Hey, that's all right. That's all right. We wanted to talk. Uh, we'll, we'll get Sean next Friday. Maybe we'll double up on him uh, as well. De'Aaron Fox, Lonzo Ball. That debate's over right now, isn't it? Isn't that debate over right now? It doesn't mean it, it may not come back, but if we're looking for who's winning, is there a debate? Is there a debate? No, De'Aaron Fox isn't winning. De'Aaron Fox, here, here's facts. Empirical facts. If you're a Laker fan, don't come at me because this is just a fact. Uh, De'Aaron Fox has not been benched at all in his career. Right. He's never had to come off the bench. You think LeBron James would uh, would approve a Lonzo Ball for De'Aaron Fox right. trade? Probably. The other thing uh, is De'Aaron Fox has never once, not one, not one time ducked De'Aaron Fox. Hey, I don't want to spend any time talking about that. We've already talked enough about uh, Lonzo Ball. Can, can I just say real quick? Did did is is Levar Ball in 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 like uh, Antarctica or something? Like is is he? I'm fine with it, but has anyone else kind of noticed? I haven't heard a peep out of him, and I love it. I almost. I don't want to jinx it. Yeah, what are you doing? But no, what are you? No, what are you like? Yeah, like right, honestly, right, what right. are you doing? Okay, you're right. You're right. Okay, you're right. All right, you're right. The whole thing is that we didn't have to talk about it anymore. Now. Okay, you're right. You're right. Huh. <laughs> De'Aaron Fox is 20 years old and just went for 31, 10, and 15. He did. Nothing but facts. Nothing but F A X. Kings will play Milwaukee. On Sunday, here's a little slice of uh, De'Aaron Fox from last night. And uh, he, he much like Buddy Hill, a little bit of an attitude uh, as far as uh, if, if you didn't believe in us, then uh, that, that's that's your problem. I think we, we, we got the win. I think we came out here and did what we were supposed to do. And, uh, I mean, it's simple though. We just asked to it. Did you see your kind of game develop the way it was after the first quarter? Uh, right now, honestly, I... Most games, I think the third quarter has been my best quarter. And um, I'm trying to figure out a way to get myself up for first quarters like that. I mean, I try, try, just try to come out aggressive. But right now, it's always been the third quarter that's really, I feel like as a team, we've we've done better at third and fourth quarters. Uh, I don't know if that's you know, a tribute to us wearing teams down, but we've, we've definitely kind of been more of a second half team this year. And they have been wearing teams down. The, the Kings third quarter, the second and third quarters, I don't have it in front of me, but I would guess their point differential in the second and third quarters is probably well into the double digits. From the 916, I would buy big Foxer brand shoes <laughs> as opposed to a uh, big baller. It, 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 by the way, in that that conversation, he also talked, De'Aaron Fox talked about his shoes, the shoes that he's been wearing this year. I don't let, let me I've been on record before saying I can't stand that De'Aaron some of De'Aaron Fox's shoes are Laker colors one two when he was asked about his shoes uh he his favorite shoe was the Kobe something I hate that but let me also go on record and say I don't care if De'Aaron Fox wears shoes that have Kobe Bryant Rick Fox and Shaquille O'Neal's faces on them with uh, Spencer Hawes on the soles of the shoes. If, if he's playing like he's playing, De'Aaron Fox can wear whatever shoe he wants. He can wear actual shoes that say, he can wear shoes that have the Laker logo on them. He can wear shoes that have the Laker logo on them and say, the, the LA Lakers are the greatest franchise in history. If he keeps putting up triple doubles and the Kings keep winning, I don't care. Oh, liar. You're a liar. What? You would care. 
Okay, like I would care privately. You would definitely, you would bring it up. Let me put it this you way. You would. Here's how it would go. Here's how it would go. Uh, you mean like I am right now? <laughs> De'Aaron Fox was incredible. He did this and that, blah, 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 blah. But does he have to wear the shoes? Mm. Okay. Does he have to wear the Laker shoes? Like, Let me, let me rephrase. I would rather De'Aaron Fox. Wear the Fox. team color shoes. Yeah, wear the team color shoes. Make, make a match. Meh. That's fine. But I would Meh. I would rather De'Aaron Fox wear shoes with Rick Fox's face on them that say the Lakers are the greatest team ever and win than have De'Aaron Fox wear shoes that have Weber and Paige's face on them and they're purple and black and they say the Kings are the greatest franchise ever and I'm going to play my entire career here and lose. Yeah, I, I would prefer the bad shoes and winning over the good shoes and losing. And then what if he wore a Kobe Bryant jersey at the parade? It would be it would be a very difficult goodbye for De'Aaron Fox from us Kings <laughs> fans, but we would we would have to get through it. <laughs> You mean like the person that wore the Kobe Bryant jersey to our Cage to K Sports Fest? Yeah. 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 Hey, if you're listening. They're not. You know. <laughs> yeah. And also, it, when we do have a parade here at some point, hopefully in my lifetime, over, uh, it, we're going, you know, we're going to see like Lakers jerseys there, right? I'm glad that somebody on the text line from the 209 shouted me out for my spot on Carmichael Dave impression. That's a dumb, Thank you. I've been working on That was on the it. worst impression. When we come back, Dave Richard. Here, can you tell who's... When we come back, Dave Richard. Meh. Uh, when we come back, Dave Richard, I'm Kyle. I'm an avocado. Psh, was that me or was that you? I'm... Do- <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kyle. Sorry, I'm, I was just smoking. Uh, I was just outside smoking. Student at loans. Uh, uh, student uh, loans. Uh, oh, here's a uh, dumb hey, dad joke. Uh, 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 I, I'm old and can't adapt uh, to uh, current uh, society. I'm uh, young and I have a beard. <laughs> Beard is weird. Yeah, so it's circle beard. Uh, uh, chin strap. Uh, not, uh, uh, we'll be right back. Not, not, Nazis, for, Nazis made Adidas. Now I'm wearing an Adidas they hat. They did. That's a fact. Now I'm wearing an That's Adidas over hat. the line. It's a fact. And you're wrong. We're back the with Dave Richard next. Wrong? Sports 1140 KHDK. <laughs>